human resources lady. Oh, oh you I know, think... it, it's actually, it's Pam. I'm sorry. Well, Pan. No, my name is Pam. Are you saying Pan or Pam? I'm saying Pam. I think I might be able to help with a Pan Pam dilemma. Yeah, that'd be great. Pam. Pam. What is up, guys? We have a brand new brawler. Supercell has brought out Pan or Panned or Pam, but I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed the intro. That's immediately what I think of every single time I hear this new brawler's name. Pam, like with a B, like comb. Anyways, yeah, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the Step Brothers reference there. But let's get to the thick of it. Is Pam any good? That's what we're trying to find out this episode. We're going to play Smash and Grab a little bit, and I feel like that's the game mode where Pam will excel more than other modes. Now, feel free to differ with me on that one. I don't think Heist is going to be her game mode. She has nothing to kind of push her way through walls, and her healing station will not heal the safe. So I don't know that Heist is going to be that great for her. Now, Bounty. She simply can't kill anything, so I don't know if Bounty's gonna be great either. She seems like pretty easy stars, so I don't know that I would use her in Bounty as well. Brawl Ball, yeah, kinda remains to be seen there. My next video will be Brawl Ball rankings for all brawlers. You guys may have seen me tweet out on that a little bit. Uh, so what does that leave? That leaves Showdown, which I've had moderate success with Pam on. And it also leaves Smash and Grab. We're gonna focus on Smash and Grab today. And as you can see, uh, Pam is really, really good at kind of holding people back from the middle. I'm sim uh, simply sitting on the side of the map right now, putting down what I would refer to as suppressing fire, making sure that there are not a lot of people approaching where we're trying to hold off. It made for a pretty quick win, although I got to attribute a lot of this suppressing fire to Spike as well in this one. Uh, you know, MSE Gwen here, pretty good player, and on top of that, Spike being able to do so much direct damage is a big reason that people are not able to push up and get any objectives accomplished. Now we'll take a look at another uh, game mode here. We've got Smash and Grab again. Pay attention to how uh, Pam can keep Mortis a little bit off guard and maybe not as aggressive as he uh, normally is. Now that's one thing I would say is really good about Pam is she is, I don't know that I would call her a hard counter to Mortis simply because she can't really kill him. But what she can do is soft counter Mortis and keep him away from the objectives, from sneaking in and grabbing all of those uh, those crystals and those gems that are hanging out in the center of the map. That's something that she's very, very good at doing, is damaging him just enough to where if somebody else hits him once or twice, he's going to die. So there you can see uh, he's got low hit points, and he ends up dying, dropping the crystals on the field. And Pam, buh, having the uh, hit points that she does, is able to go up and pick those up, but she gets wrecked, dude. Simply cannot put out any damage in order to take out the uh, the other brawlers. So if you find yourself in a situation where you've got a low health primo here, that should be manageable. But if going up against any other brawler, like right now we know we have to kind of take down their gem carrier. You see Mortis in the back with those gems. I'm trying to make my way to him here. He gets a little bit healed up. That should be an easy kill. We do get the kill. Luckily, he jumped right into us. So that's one really nice thing about Pam is she is kind of a Mortis killer or at least thwart her of his efforts. I don't know that she's like anti-Mortis, but she definitely doesn't make it easy for him because the indiscriminate spray on that junk that she's firing out of her handheld turret it really hits all over the map, so it's very, very difficult to dodge if you are a Mortis, whereas some something like a Piper or a Brock or, you know, even Ricochet or Colt, very easy to dodge as a, uh, as a Mortis. And the ones that aren't as easy to dodge, for example, Shelly, uh, Mortis can take her down once she's used some of her ammo. Shelly is, is also a counter to Mortis, but... With only 800 or so hit points, it's a big difference between uh, Pam, who even if Mortis has all of his ammo stocked up, he can't kill her. So that's that's one really positive thing. I'm going to get off that point, though. Uh, there you see kind of going after Mortis here. Really? You can't kill anybody. That's, that's why I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you guys are having uh, different results with Pam, like... The, the healing station here that I've dropped down in the center, not the best placement, but honestly, 
I don't necessarily like this as a super because it tethers you to one location. You know, as a, as a team, you need to be able to move fluidly as a group. And because the other team can actually see the radius of where you're healing, uh, it doesn't really matter if you hide the healing station. People can still see that aura on the field. They know it's there. They know you're going to hover around it. And it makes it very, very easy to lead shots and also lead your opponent uh, into that area. So I'm not a huge fan of her super. And I, I don't feel that it's as overpowered as I thought it was going to be pre-launch of this update. I played this in beta. And I, I got to I gotta admit, guys, I was a little concerned. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so overpowered. You can literally stand there right through a barley super or something well that's definitely not the case uh she gets wrecked regardless and uh you know we do get a win here but you know it wasn't it wasn't for anything that i did we got mortis with 12 uh 12 crystals to wrap things up so nice games there this is where it gets a little bit sketchy guys not gonna lie uh pam flat out struggled for me regardless of who we were going up against i felt like one-on-one -on -one, regardless of what was happening I couldn't do enough damage uh, to get any kills, really. Uh, people, if they were smart, they would just run away. Now, Pam does have a lot of survivability. She is able to stay alive for quite some time if you're able to kind of kite around. Although, sometimes I feel like she's more of a distraction than an actual contributor. What I mean by that is, you can see I'm kind of up on the flank right now. I feel like if I can devote enough attention to myself by, you know, one plus maybe a second brawler, if two people are focused on me, that means we have two on one somewhere else on the field. And if I can drop my healing station on the field to support myself and kind of keep people occupied and busy, it might just be uh, to our teammates' favor. The one thing that I'm finding a difficult, uh, you know, challenge in using Pam is I feel like there's nothing that she does that somebody else doesn't do better. Um, Poco has more direct healing. Although he doesn't have the sustained healing, but Poco is able to be mobile, move around with his team, float, you know, in a triangle formation, or you know, even ditch uh, a certain location of the map and retreat if if that's what the situation warrants. Pam does not have that flexibility. Once the super is on the field, it's used, it's gone, and you can't really pick it up and move it. Now, if you could pick it up and move it, like a oh, I don't know, a turret in Call of Duty or something, that could be kind of fun, but you can't. So. Anyways, my overall impressions on Piper are underwhelmed, to say the least. I, I don't foresee myself using her at all. Uh, maybe to get some general trophies to get my trophy count up, but for the most part, not super impressed with Piper. Now, let me know if you guys had similar thoughts on the Brawler in the comments. Is anybody, like, it really excelling with her? in a particular team composition or on a particular game mode or on a certain map, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I am able to win on Showdown a little bit. I feel like that's probably her best game mode for me uh, so far, simply because you're able to rely on the damage that other people do uh, to her, uh, to your opponents rather. You're able to rely on other people's damage to kind of finish them off and make it very difficult to escape because her spread is really wide on her bullets. Um, it's easy to chip and get that little bit of damage that you need to keep somebody in combat and also not healing. So that's something I found is pretty advantageous with her in uh, you know Showdown. Although I really kind of wanted to see if she had a place in the meta with regards to team composition. So far not seeing it. Uh, definitely prefer Terra out of the two new brawlers. Terra is dominant on almost every game mode. And as you can see here, I've dropped another healing station and uh, kind of distracted Bull, taking him out of the fight, so to speak. And he's still distracted with me while Mortis is in the middle, uh, getting all of those gems and promptly going over and dying. But hey, he was able to pick up all of those gems in the first place um, and hand them over to the other team. Uh, that being said, I'm going up against Terra head-to-head. -head. This does not bode well for me, as you can see. Just quite frankly, I do not have the damage output to deal with a Terra on the other side, or really any brawler for that matter. Um, Pam is really, really underwhelming. Um, you know, what can I say? I, I, I am happy on one hand because... A lot of people have a theory that every single new brawler that, uh, that Supercell puts out, they make them overpowered on purpose. I've heard this so many times. They make them overpowered on purpose because they're trying to get people to spend gems. They're trying to get people to spend money to power them up, and then they nerf them when they've got that money. That's not an actual thing, guys. That's not something that ever goes into 
uh, the thought process with the developers. I've actually asked them that directly. Like, does this ever, you know, factor in? Are you guys trying to just monetize, or what's the deal? Um, no, they just try to balance it to the best of their ability, and sometimes the testing mode is different than uh, how it ends up when the players get their hands on it. So that's kind of, uh, you know, the overall thoughts here on Pam as a brawler. Not super impressed. Maybe things get better, guys. I am not entirely certain. Um, but, you know, she does uh, end up taking the L here. But that's all I have for this episode, guys. Go ahead and leave me uh, your thoughts on Pam in the comments. Are you guys successful with her? Let me know. For more Brawl Stars action, stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you drop that subscription, and I will catch you guys in the next episode.